now that we have our setup, we're going to test our setup. And we're going to test the viability, the accuracy, the speed of the rendering based on these settings. So in order to create a photo render, we're going to go document, creative imaging, and this time we don't need to go to the photo render settings, we could, or we can just click on this box here, photo render settings, sorry, photo render projection. That's going to render with the settings that I just saved, so this is set up as outdoor fast, and we see it renders quite quickly. If I wanted to, it would be really good to record how quickly that renders. So I might even take a screenshot in order, if I was trying to start to work out how long a particular file is going to take to render, um, and then test different render settings in order to test what's going to be most helpful for my particular project. Uh, I'd record the time as well as the uh, settings, and of course the complexity of the model has a lot to do with how long it takes to render as well. We see that we've currently got a um, a background image, this sort of sky. It rendered quite well. It looked, as far as we could understand, a pretty true representation of colour. Maybe there's a little bit of um, a bit too much pink or a bit too much orange added to this wall based on the light colour. We'll talk more about that later. So we should save this file save as. I would always suggest, even if it's not doing what you want it to, you will save it. So we'll call this surfaces test one. And even though it's a lot of work, I'll save every version of these. I don't need to save it as a TIFF. I might save it as something more like a JPEG for now in order to make it a lot faster. But when I'm doing my final renders, I will likely save them as TIFFs. Great. So where do we go from here? Now that we've done our first test, we're going to update these and see if we can see any differences, noticeable differences, with the different settings. Now we haven't adjusted the surfaces yet, we're still using the generic settings. We could jump straight to adjusting these surfaces to see if we can get some more information in terms of the variety. So we can go to our wall tool and for now we'll just use different surfaces that ArchiCAD has available to us. And in order to best understand light and shadow, I'm going to make both of these walls the same material. If I want to test different materials, I'm going to do those in different renders. So let's just choose one of these. So we'll choose the Brick Aged Natural. As I said before, there's some pretty hideous textures as a standard in ArchiCAD. And then we're going to use this one here called Concrete Panel. A good point to note when we're talking about surfaces is if it's got a texture applied, we'll see this little picture. And if it's got a vectorial hatch applied, we'll see this little icon as well. If it doesn't have any of these, such as the glass or the IFCs or the paint, it's literally just the colour that we see represented on the left hand side. There's no image attached, no texture attached. Now if you can get a paint color without a texture, that's brilliant. It's going to make it faster to render and it's possibly going to give you a more true representation because you might be able to use whatever method, RGB, CMYK, um, or a hex color to be able to determine that true paint color. Uh, for now, I want to deliberately not do that. I want to use one that has a texture. So now we have a brick texture and a concrete texture. Let's try that again without changing the settings. Document, creative imaging, photo render projection. We see that's already taking longer. Why? Because we've applied textures. And like I said, the bigger, the more reflective, the texture, the longer it's going to take to render. So the first one was four seconds and without even changing any of the quality settings or the speed settings we now see that took 26 seconds. File, save as, let's save this as surface test 2. Alright, one more for this video. 
Let's boost the quality now of the render, not the size of the render, but the rendering quality, document, creative imaging, photo render settings. And we're going to still use the standard settings. We can increase this if necessary. We're going to change this scene to outdoor daylight medium and see what difference that gives us with the rendering outcome. And now we don't need to go back into it. We can also click on this button in order to be able to create that render. I'm going to stop this now. Uh, as you can see, this is going to take considerably longer, even though it's a very, very simple model. And in the next video, we'll review and talk through what advantages we have gained from a medium quality render compared to the fast render.